I'm here at Legal Tech with Mark Halligan, and he's going to be talking to us a little bit today about blockchain and how it's impacting the markets over in, in China and other developments. Thanks for being on the show again, Mark. Well, thanks, Lee. Um, well, blockchain is the buzzword. You read about it uh, all the time. Uh, I was fortunate to participate today in the uh, blockchain boot camp at Legal Work in New York and to have uh, excellent guests in the audience with Lee being there. Blockchain is uh, a network that allows you to store hash code, coded information, including the timestamp, which allows you later on to prove that that was the state of the document at, on the date and on the time it was put into the blockchain. So what it does then, it creates transparency across the internet. So if, if two people engage into a transaction, they use hashing technology to, to authenticate the contract, and it's a public transparency blockchain that people can inspect that takes away any question as to whether or not you and I agreed to those terms. Correct. So you could have, let's say, six different parties involved. You could have uh, one side of the contract, uh, one person on one side of the contract, the, the signing party on the other side of the contract, both, both those... Um, persons have their own banks and their own underwriters and maybe their own insurance and by having a distributed blockchain network everyone can see identically that everyone has the state of the documents as they exist at the t at the point in time that you look at the documents which creates automatic trust because everyone has the same documents and they're tran and it's transparent um, mark over lunch we were talking a little bit about <laughs> things that can be done to help prove the identity of the contract signer, that it was really them. What are some of the technologies that you're looking at today that can help bring about two-factor authentication? And uh, just explain briefly what uh, two-factor authentication is. If you can. Well, uh, uh, as you were explaining to me at lunch, uh, two-factor identification is what we're seeing on Google now. You put your email address, and then it wants a secondary verification code, such as your phone number, or they may send you, uh, after you give that information, they may send you a PIN to enter before you're given access to the uh, computer pro program. Um, so in a nutshell, two-factor authentication requires you to have two different means of authenticating yourself. One typically is a password, and the second one is either something you have, like a fob or your cell phone that gets the text code, right? or it's something that you are, like a retina scan or a thumbprint, something like that. Correct. And it's it just it just gives a whole ad, additional level of security. So, what are some of the challenges you see seen coming here in the U.S. as the courts start to struggle with accepting blockchains as evidence? Well, I think the courts will accept block blockchain evidence, just as they did with end case images of computers. And there was a little bit of a learning curve with the creation of the hash code in an end case image that if, the, if anyone tried to tamper with it, it wouldn't work. That hash code had to have every letter and everything exactly the way it was on the data was imaged. Once the courts understood that, it's obviously authenticated uh, and it's, ob it's, it's, it's obviously probative uh, because that tells you the extant state at that point in time. And the same thing's true now with blockchain. In fact, China has already, in their provinces, and in their interme intermediate co courts, have recognized you can enter blockchain evidence in evidence. Yeah, and more so and in more that contracts respect, are going that way. So more is, and more contracts are going. This isn't going away. Because we're in an international world, mm -hmm. and you have to set up a, if, you know, in, in the uh, nuts and bolts, the traditional, you'd have to have you know, offices all around the world to coordinate all these signatures and, and relationships. We can do all this without having to go through the brick and mortar, you know, in different countries. You can do it on a blockchain. Much more efficient, much less costly. What, what are the exciting uh, things you think we'll see with blockchain going into 2019? Well, <clears throat> well, I have been working on a software up uh, system called the Trade Secret Examiner that allows you to input information and data uh, and capture metadata about 
a company's trade secrets, which is then immediately a blockchain, uh, and th therefore is available later on th if you have to litigate a trade secret misappropriation case. This is our trade secret. Yeah. This is the information we had in the system on this date. It was blockchain. It was authentic, and be able to prove up without all sorts of discovery the existence of that information as a trade secret. Yeah, Mark's been doing this for quite a while. He he's a pioneer as it comes to attorneys understanding blockchain and digital algorithms. Right. <laughs> right. Really, uh, uh, thanks a bunch for being on the show. It's well, great having you on a second time today. We'll, right. Let's go for a record and likes and reshares. Right. Well, everyone remembers this the first time where we were a real hit on the internet, <laughs> and I hope Thank that'll you. be the case again. Right. Thanks a bunch Thank for being you. on the show. You're and welcome. Thank hope you. Hope to see many of you at Legal Tech if you're here. Hit, hit me up. Mark, Mark might be here a few more days thanks to Correct. Chicago weather. Right. Looks like I may not get out of New York. <laughs> not, the, not the worst thing in the world. All right, everyone. Take Thanks. Care.